truly speak for myself. I was born a monster in a downtown hospital at 8.44 a.m. on a cold winter morning with the help of a doctor who didn't know better and a mother that did the best she could with what she had. I loved animals, baseball, and Halloween. I was unaware of the genes I contained, the destruction I was capable of, and the nature of lizard epigenetics that determined when and where I would lose my tail, or more to the point, my head. enough to be able to tell you that I have survived this long, not just as a monster, but as a friend, a slice of a support network, a wife, a confidant. I didn't realize the nature of my monstrousness until I was old enough to read, until I was old enough to speak. At the end of my teens, I became chronically ill, though I didn't know yet that a word existed for it. At that time, I was still covered by the luxury of health insurance, something I had been without for the past ten years of my life. assessed myself as about 61% post-traumatic stress, but also pre-traumatic stress from past and future sexual abuse, which is 33.3% normal for a human woman during this time, in this yuga, in this country, under these circumstances. exorbitantly greater than two, which 
would only continue to climb until my resting bitch face grew in. My pepper spray was permanently affixed to my right hip, and I had snapped enough to take a punch in the subway from a stranger and keep fighting. monster, 19% gullible, and 32% not giving a shit since my condition was improving. I could tell you that I learned to do white woman yoga and quit my job to live and work in a white person ashram. I could tell you that I didn't speak much at that time. The sounds I heard in that place were as true as any other. Sometimes holding one's breath can choke the monster out for a few moments. with artificial intelligence that will one day inherit this world will not struggle with kindness less, just differently. There is an interesting place that can exist, not physically but otherwise, where the walls are cheap and easy to erect. This place comes under fire, sometimes from elsewhere, but usually from oneself. Once enough walls go up, there's no more risk of fire, no more space to move, and no more sunlight. So I named the monster Ventromedial Prefrontal Cortex, Amygdala, and White Matter Fibers. By the time I leave the white person ashram, my invisibility has certainly run out. I profusely thank the black hole at the center of the universe that my monster defeated the devil. So I named the monster the myth of entrainment. And I call the devil by his Christian name. Spiritual bypass. Whatever ashrama looks like in that yuga, in this yuga, where pseudo-spiritual parents leave their children's bodies south of the border with their spear gun wounds to ensure that they don't grow into monsters because the internet, well, this isn't it. So by the grace of the black hole at the center of the universe, I am made aware of the fact that I must move these walls if I am to survive. There is no food left in this lightless capsule and I will slowly starve to death. I can't move an inch, I can't move a wall, so I stop and I panic and I force myself to breathe. address the monster in the formal tense, and I ask, what is your name?
surprised, the monster stares at me and slowly tells me, I don't have time for names. I keep you alive. I intervene. So I name the monster a practice, not a personality trait. I think to myself, why in the world would a monster want to protect me? And he said, we are the same. So I named the monster a patriot, a Christian. And I caught myself screaming, but I've lived and died between the lines, and Q is the truest of patriots. It is at this point that I realize that I too am doing the best I can with what I have. It is 3.23 in the morning, and I am 93% shame. Not ashamed, but shame itself. I'm 46% monster and 72% a scared little girl in the body of a grown woman. I am 31% more visible than I was two minutes ago and 29% more human, which makes me 99.3% more terrified. So I name the monster, hot and cold cognition. monster whispers to me, it is the ultimate truth that will keep you with me. That alone is the truest truth. So I name the monster, starving to death. And I whisper back, I am dying here. And I name the monster, neurological changes that mimic addiction. The monster screams, you don't know better. You're the reason we're under fire in the first place. So I name the monster. Fuck off, I'll fucking kill you. children are weaponized for geopolitical agendas when rape is very, very real. Perpetrators walk the streets freely and victims are systematically punished, child and adult alike. And 
And so I am finally myself when I'm with you, I think to myself, in order to not react, we need to go to where we are, not be where we aren't. I am reminded. The warmth of the light on our face, our face under fire, I think we can only speak for ourselves.